Hello everybody, um, welcome to my channel. I realise that for the, some of the Chatelaine ones, I'm not actually doing any kind of intro. So I know that this is the first part of part six, <laughs> so I might as well do a quick intro. Uh, if you're new, thank you for finding this video, um, whether you're finding it as part of a Chatelaine journey yourself or part of a um, following me or finding me in other places, thank you very much. Um, this is part six. I am, uh, oh, Belushi Stitches on Instagram, and um, that's about it. Uh, so I'm on part six. Part six is, I'm just gonna move the camera out. Part six is this corner section here. Um, in case you're not familiar with this one, Evening in the Park is a fully symmetrical one, so it'll be exactly the same here as in this corner and then the two at the bottom as well. Um, this is the first part as we've been going. So the centre motif here, um, and then there's been five parts. So now I'm on part six. Um, this is the first part where the whole design isn't in a pattern on a particular page of the PDF pattern that I've got. Um, what you're given for this part is this corner section only in this orientation and then it says that in order to put it in this corner you have to rotate it 90 degrees so i've been sort of i wouldn't say worried about it but i've been one wondering how to do it if I, i've got a pdf reader so and i'll talk about that in a second so i knew that i'd be able to rotate the page but the practicalities of that i haven't really sort of gone through so i'm kind of working it through now um I've done the outline of this in a silken colours. It's very similar, as you can see, to the colour of my fabric. <laughs> but there's lots of other colours to go in, so I'm not worried yet. Um, <laughs> yet. So I've done the outline here, and I'm just going to start the outline on this corner. So what I'm going to do is um, zoom right out <laughs> of... The pattern uh, so I just wanted to show you what I do as well so this is um, part six so at the bottom of each part is the instructions for the part so my brain would probably put instruction page and then the pattern that's not how this pattern works it's the pattern bits and then the instructions are the last page of the part it's a bit weird um, so what I do is I mark it completely green when I'm done and then I mark um, things red if I'm not going to use that page. Because as you can see here, there's 45 pages in this whole PDF. And you don't, do not need to stitch 45 pages. You can see here, this is the shape of the pattern I've just done. And these uh, sort of snowflake motifs here are the um, one-ply snowflakes and beads that I've already done. So this should you should recognise this to what I've stitched. Um, I don't want this black and white page, so I've made it completely unusable put red all over it that's that so if I just scroll up the next one that I do want is the um, color one I find that much easier and again that's probably easier to see the shape and then you can recognize the trees and the snowflakes I've already done all of this so it's just this bit I need to stitch as you can see this is orientated at the top left so I've made I make things yellow when I'm working on them just as a visual if I need to scroll through the whole pattern it's just much easier for me to see the colour that I'm working on and I've marked it top left and then what I've been able to do so I'm using um, Zodo or Xodo so it's X-O-D-O -O is the pattern name uh, app name I'm using this on my Kindle and what you can do which I only discovered this morning is if I click on this little icon you can see all the pages. I'm coming right out now because I don't want you to obviously see any of this pattern. So here's the 45 pages. Well, it was 44. I've added a new one. So what you can do is, um, so this was the original one and I selected it. Right, start again. Honestly, it's so easy. <laughs> so easy to press the wrong button. So I'm going to press this button again here. So... If you hold the button, hold the page down, um, that is a blue tick in there. And you can choose what to do. So in here, you can duplicate 
and that's what I did. I hit duplicate and then it turned this page, I'm just going to deselect. Uh, I don't know. Ah, yeah, that one. Um, it created a duplicate of the page here, which I then was able to hold down, select again, and then I used the rotate button here to rotate it 90 degrees to get it the orientation I need for the top right corner, which you can see there. And so what I'm doing is, at the moment, I only need top left, top right. Because, I'll come back to that. I only need top right, top left, top right. When I go to the bottom, I will create two new pages um, in this pattern, two new pages with bottom left, bottom right. I don't need them now, so I'm not gonna do them. So, as I said, this is part six starts here. That's part five. The instructions for part five is at the end of part five. Part six, I don't need the black and white version. My top left color version, top right color version. There's the instructions. And then there's another page which shows exactly which threads to use, sort of handwritten on. It shows which um, threads to use for all the individual eyelets. So, and then that's part seven, starts with this black and white color black and white page. Um, so I just wanted you to see sort of how I'm managing that because um, the people are printing it out, people are doing all sorts of things. If you use this program, um, I've probably made a meal of explaining that to you, but I thought I'd have a go at explaining that. I get back to this and I'm top left. So I can't, I'm not gonna zoom in, but I've highlighted using the annotate function and using a um, using this button and green, so I could do that, I suppose. Just the highlight side. That's what I use to highlight the stitches I've done. So I've now got um, top left. If I scroll down, I've got top right in that correct top right orientation, <laughs> and I'm making it really obvious for myself because I feel like this is a really um, a lot of these things are really easy to. To make mistakes on so I'm I've gone with that um, I don't know if that's in any way helpful but this is how I'm doing it and it's helpful for me and had I seen somebody else also doing this I would have appreciated seeing <laughs> seeing what they've done and how they were going to manage this so um, so that's it um, I'm gonna now just go back to the uh, stitching okay so Back to where I was, you can see I've done the outline in a particular colour. There's more stuff around the outside here. So when I say outline, I don't mean um, it's not the most outer part, part, whatever. Um, and I'm about to start here. And it's quite good. I think I've only got a stitch about five, count about five stitches from here. Um, but what I am doing is as I'm working my way around, I'm making sure that perhaps, oh, I'll show you on this side much easier perhaps I'm making sure that this one matches to here and even when I counted across so I just started there and I worked my way across even then I just ran my needle down and made sure that it lined up and then here it's a little bit more tricky to the beads because the beads when you come to them if you come to them are kind of in the middle of a natural stitch it's not as easy so what I'm picking out instead is like the end the edges of these little kind of snowflake stitches and making sure that that is three stitches away from there sort of thing. So very specific, um, <laughs> very specific counting, making absolute, absolutely sure that it all matches. Um, so far, so good. So far, so good. So I shall update as soon as possible. Bye. Hello everyone. I uh, thought I'd show you where I'm up to so far. I don't know what just happened then. Um, so this is the top left so far. And I I did what I said in that I was going to do the blue frame um, on both sides because it's just worth doing, which I've done here. And then I did say that I was going to do the next colour in this section and do it in the right hand section and then pick the next colour here and do it in the right section as well. So that, but actually, by the time I stitched this colour, which is sort of this bluey, yellow, greeny colour, there's a lot of it. By the time I'd done that, I realised... I'd pretty much nearly done all the cross stitches in this section, so I just thought I'd get just get it done. Um, 
this was a lot so I just needed to, to get this whole section done so once I'd finished this colour I then moved on to this light white colour which has got a few little what's my hand accents here and here bits in the corner um, there's two colours left now in this section which is um, this and I thought I'd show you this because it's a new a new one I haven't used this one so yet uh, so far it's so soft oh my goodness it's so soft um it's a thread gatherer sn snc so silk and colors um silver queen 033 um it's showing as pink on the pattern but it's not pink it is kind of this top section let's go in the light this top section here is brownie pinky oh it looks really brown it's um brownie pinky peachy yellow and then the bottom section is blue uh very light very light pale blue um it's not showing the right color at all for you so i was thinking about whether i should sort of fussy cut it in order to get this sort of brown color in um so it's not all light blue that matches in but actually I'm just going to stitch it and if you end up with a brown bit pinky bit you end up with a pinky bit I think I think I'm going to do that so yes um uh, this stitching for this uh, stitching with for on this is going on I haven't had my coffee yet is on pause now after I'm just going to do this for like an hour and then I'm going to a cross stitch retreat so I need to pack and sort myself out sort my house out and then I'll probably get back to it on Sunday evening. So I'm going to miss a day. And um, I need to work out what to take with me to stitch on. Uh, okay, bye. Hello. Uh, I've got an update for you. It's mid-November 2023. Yep. <laughs> Just checking the year. Um, and you'll be pleased to know, maybe, that I have now finished the all the cross stitching in this top left section and also in the top right section which means I'm about to go off and do all of the uh, specialty stitches that are mainly in these big squares I think um, there's little gaps where are they like here one two three and that's where some beads go. But I think in nearly all of these squares of different sizes, there are eyelets uh, using lots of different um, yeah, lots of uh, maybe four or five different colours. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, I'll find out now. So what I'm going to do what shall I do? I'm just going to pick one and then I'm going to do both this side and the other side. So all the specialty stitches in the whole of the top section um i'll just come back a bit so yeah some specialty stitches then some beading and that's it oh in fact i've got the pattern in front of me one two i'll just count in my head hang on okay so i may have added it up correctly i think i think there's 30 beads in this section Anyway, I'm now back on the Chatelaine. I went to the Retford Floss Friends UK retreat at the weekend. Um, had a fabulous time and didn't stitch on this one for two, possibly three days. I can't really remember what I did on the day I came back, the day after I came back. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much back on it. Uh, see you in the next update. Bye. Hello, everyone. Um, I've got an update for you. This is it's Saturday morning, middle of November. I nearly slipped into an Australian accent then. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> I stopped myself at the last minute because that's what I sound like when I walk around the house talking to myself. Anyway, moving on. Uh, it's Saturday morning and I thought I'd just give you an update uh, where I am. So I'm on part... I've already said this. I'm on part six. It's these corner motifs, uh, a couple of cross stitch colours, and then loads of eyelets, loads of eyelets, um, all different sizes. 
and all kind of squished in next to each other. Um, how many colours? One, two, three, four. So four different ones. Um, these, let me get my pointy, pointy scissors. Okay, these are these. Uh, it's a bit. Is it too dark? No, it's okay. My pointy scissors are rusty. Ew. Um, these are the Princess Pearl Petite. So it's one strand every other hole. So every cross stitch. And then all the others are non pearl petite. And it's into every half stitch. So for every one stitch, there's two prongs. Um, yeah, this is an, a sort of one on its own in each part. Um, yeah, so that's done. So you can see there's a couple of gaps sort of here and here. Erg. One there. There's a couple. Unfortunately, this is the same colour as um, my fabric, so they are tricky to find. But um, yeah, I've got some beading to do this morning. Uh, I'll just show you the other side. Because I completed... Oh, I'm just going to move the scroll frame, actually, because it's in the dark. There we go. Um, I completed these last night watching the final of Big Brother. Um, I've always watched Big Brother since the very first series when I was at uni. Absolutely loved it. If it wasn't on the telly, I'd do it as a social experiment. Like, I genuinely am interested in it. But the fact that it's on the TV, absolutely no chance. Um... So, this is now ready for beading as well. They look more square on here. It's just the lighting. Um, I know Ripley. She wants to go in the cupboard, so I better hurry up and... I better let her in the cupboard. She loves it. She just run, runs in and goes, yeah. And run. I don't you, and then you run straight back out again. Now I'm going to go and do the beading to get this half of this part finished. Um... Oh, the eyelets are a lot, though. They're so much fun, but they are a lot. They're not particularly tidy. Um, on a lot of them, I've got one strand here sort of going out a little bit more. I think it's the way that I've moved from this one to this one. So some of them you have to move and sort of carry your thread through this bit because you can't carry it through the hole. Um, so, yeah, some of them I've got this one little strand. I mean, this is very close up. This is very... See, I haven't got it there. Do you see what I mean? Um, what about on the other side? We, uh, Yeah, I've got it on all of them. I've got a double one. So I've got one little white strand there. One little white strand there. And then up here I've got both white strands. In the corners. I... I am... Um, I am unfazed. It'll be fine. Um, so yeah, beading next. And there, oh, there's some crystals to put in here. Um, can I get to any in this section? Oh yeah, there you go. So it's this size crystal. Oh, my felt is in the way. This size crystal. Uh, some dark ones go in this section. Um, which I think I will put on. I think I'm just going to go for it. Um... And then leave, it's still these big cubes to go in here that I'm leaving till the end. But I think it's okay putting those crystals on. I haven't, I mean, I haven't, I don't, oh no, I'm not going to say it. Okay, I'll update you, <laughs> I'll update you uh, once the beads are done. Uh, okay, bye. Howdy. Um, so, a little bit of uh, info. I'm doing the beading on this section. You can see some beads here. And I've got one of these large crystals here you can see um and i've been using my tacky bob <clears throat> and they're fine for the small um small beads uh then i've been putting these crystals on the other side on this side this side um and i've just noticed when i took one off of the pad to put in the stitching um that there's a there was a little bit of kind of glue i guess on one of the sides of the crystal so because this is a learning experience for me i'm not 
and an expert in anything, um, I decided not to use this tacky bob for the big crystals anymore. Um, because actually, once you try, once you get the glue off, there is a tiny bit that's kind of left. It just doesn't look as shiny as the other sides. I think it's only shown because it's a dark crystal. Um, I didn't notice it or see it on any of the others, so I'm I'm okay with them. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, but with these, I don't think you can. Yeah, I just don't want that. I don't want that. Um, when you take these beads off, sometimes if they have been stuck down for a while or they're, you know, really stuck down, when you take them off, there's a tiny bit of, I mean, I'm talking tiny bit of glue or some sort of residue on the edge. Um, and if you kind of press them into your finger, they do stick into your finger. So, but I don't think it's enough for me to change how I'm doing this. So I'm going to use them for the small beads but I'm just not going to use them for the big beads. So I've got a diamond painting tray. In fact, I'll just show you these lovely crystals while I'm here. Uh, I'm going to use the diamond painting tray to do the work. Oh, sorry. They're so pretty. Out of interest, I'll just see if I can find... I don't think I'll be able to find anything now. Did that have anything on it? Nah. Impossible to tell now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using this tray for the diamond paint, um, for these big crystals instead. They're so pretty. Amazing. I might give it a bit of a brush because it's got loads of little fibres on it, which you can't see by eye. Let's show up a lot on camera. Uh, that was it. Okay, bye. Okay, beading is now done. So we have um, these light green ones in the corner here and here. Dark crystal here. Same then at the bottom that looked purple for a second but it's the same one and then we have these different beads that are kind of dark gray going all the way down um the middle to here um and awkwardly they are directly through eyelets um now you could just stitch you wouldn't see an invisible thread haha you wouldn't see an invisible thread once it's framed um if it went through the whole of the eyelet but I decided to go around it so I've done two here and then I've kind of worked at the back the thread um, behind the other stitches my finger looks massive <laughs> um, all the way through here to here and then I've gone round this eyelet to here uh, round this eyelet etc etc so it does take a lot of going back and forth um, I think it's great. So these sections, so this also, this is kind of, yeah, it is showing a bit better now. It's kind of pinky, peachy color, every other, uh, every other cross. This is the, probably the first section, which is less noticeable on my fabric. But as you can see, you can see it absolutely fine. Um, this side's beaded too. And once all the eyelets are in, it's really effective. You can see them really well. I thought for a while, I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to see them. But actually, they're really noticeable. Um, yeah, it's really cool. So I'm about to move the fabric uh, up so I can stitch this on the bottom. And that's just reminded me I need to create two new pages uh, in my pattern so I can rotate the um the pattern corner. I'm going to do that now. Um, yeah, and just keep going. Okay. Thank you for watching. See you in a bit. And I thought while I was moving the fabric, I might show you, well, as much as I can, awkwardly with one hand. This is where it is so far. This does go 
down further, but I can't quite scroll it properly. This is everything so far. And this does not do any of the sparkle the justice that it deserves. Amazing. I am <laughs> I am really chuffed about it. It looks really cool. But yeah, if you get the opportunity to see a chatelaine in the flesh, that's a good picture then uh, definitely take it. If I do say so myself, this is really cool. Hello everyone, uh, just a quick update to say that I have finished all the cross stitches now in the two corner sections. So um, all I have left now is about 20 eyelets, something like that, probably possibly more um, and oh and some beads so not long to go um, I just noticed as well and I wanted to say that this is as per the pattern but I noticed it a lot when I was editing um, my ro my roast my most recent um, floss tube just getting my pointy things um, that there is on this snowflake, where is it? Where's my hand? There. Um, this bead is really close to this little three pronged end here. And this bead has a stitch between there and there. And that is correct. Um, it's the same on all of them that this bead is closer to here. Um, I don't think anyone will notice, but if I did it again, I would consider moving it down half a stitch. Uh, where am I? These ones. Maybe down half a stitch. Just to kind of give it a bit more... Um, a bit more space. But um, I haven't really noticed. I, I remember doing it thinking, oh, I, I'm not sure this is right. I better count and check the pattern. I thought I was doing doing strange things um but i only noticed it more when i was just um editing my floss tube and it looked really really obvious at the angle but um anyway that's for a previous part um yeah so i'm going to get on with um many many eyelets and some beads and i will come back to you in a bit bye so it's the next day now and i have just finished all the eyelets and are they all, eyelet? yeah, all the eyelets, which are the only stitches, specialty stitches on this bottom left section. Um, wait, I forgot to count. 26, 26 eyelets, different sizes and different uh, threads. So for instance, I'll just come in. Uh, the green one, the dark green one, whoops, is one strand in every um fabric hole but the one on the bottom left of that is the princess pearl petite and that is every other fabric hole so you'll see the blue fabric a bit more because it's a thicker thread uh, also i have no idea how the blue um the dark blue eyelets here have bigger fabric holes than the lighter ones I must have just been really on it when I was doing the blue ones and um, went a bit nuts. So they're <laughs> slightly different sizes. Oh, do you think it's noticeable too much? It, also, it's the colour of the it's a it's the colour of the thread. Let's just say let's just call it that. Uh, so all I have left now, uh, which I will bring you along on. Um, is the eyelets in this bottom right section and then the beading. Uh, so I'm going to film doing this uh, later on today. So not long to go. It's very exciting. Um, yeah. 
Okay, bye. Well, hello. So I thought I would sit down this evening and try and finish all the eyelets in this whole part, which means I think I said 26 eyelets in this section. Um, I'm just gonna set the camera up and get ready. Okay. Okay. Not okay, hang on. Okay. Um, so I'm using a silk. Um, there are dark blues. Actually, they're not dark blue. When I say dark blue, it's because it's the darker colour of the two. But actually, it's the same colour as the fabric, pretty much. Which I know I've said about a million times. Obviously, that's an exaggeration, but... I think you've all heard it multiple times. Um, so one strand, what I've done is um, in the pattern, there is a separate page right at the bottom that has, um, right at the bottom of this part, that has this whole section um, with hand drawn, um, hand, cat hair, hand, actually that might have been mine, uh, hand drawn directions to the eyelets with which, uh, thread it is and what I've done is I've used that page and I've rotated it in my PDF pattern because as much as I could work it out it's just easier to be able to rotate so if you can rotate your pages on your PDF reader it really helps um yeah okay so I'm not going to do at the moment I'm not going to do any close-ups um, I'm just going to work my way through. And what I might do is a couple of them. And then put some speed on. And watch the TV in the background. So these ones are one strand and they're going through every single hole. No, I've missed one. So, let me zoom in, I'll show you. Okay, there's two stitches here, a green one and a black one, and I'm going into every single fabric hole. So there, at the top of the green, there in the middle of the green, there in between the green and the black, then another one in the middle of the black and another one in the corner at the bottom. So I've just come up in between the green and the black one, and what I needed to do was come up in the middle of the green one and I'm kind of it depends which side it is one side's easier to pull tight than the other but otherwise I'm sort of reaching across to the wrong way so I bring my other hand up to kind of pull the thread um, if you've watched my videos before well, firstly, thank you. Oops, my tablet's about to fall over. Um, it's tricky then to remember where I started. Have I already done this bit? I think I've already done this bit. Um, actually, I can't tell. I think I started in the bottom left. can't remember now. I was talking. <laughs> oh, let's just do it anyway. Right. Um, it's not a very good example. Uh, so, because um, these have got holes in the middle, if I was to finish the thread um, somewhere up here, then that last loop would go across the eyelet like that and it would look awful. So instead, I'm finishing my tail in the direction that I want to pull the thread in order to clear out the fabric hole. So I need to take the fabric this way to the left, bottom left, but then I need to travel from there to the um, next place which is here. So I'm just going to do some tail stuff on the back. Well, not the tail, but the fabric travelling. There you go. 
Okay, so what I've done is, here's the eyelet I've just done. I've had to bring the thread this way in order to open the hole. Um, but then I'm traveling all the way back across here into this eyelet. So um, what I wanted to do was go f straight from here all the way across, but then that would have meant that this thread would have been um, across here. You would have seen it, so it would have been rubbish. So um, instead, I've gone the opposite to the direction of travel that I needed to go in. Uh, and now I'm working in this eyelet here. Okay, <laughs> I've had some dinner and I'm back. Um, so, that is, that is it. Um, ow. Some of them are a bit tricky to get in. You kind of do half of it thinking that you're pulling too tight and then you get round and you think oh no it's not big enough it just sort of works out at the end really there we go Two down. I realise I've probably chosen the worst one to show you as it's pretty much the same colour as the fabric. It was silly, wasn't it? Okay, so I'm going to tie this one off. So in this whole section, there are, do you know, I think I can hear church bells. What time is it? Yeah, so there's 10 in this colour. So I've just done four with you. So what I'll probably do is just speed this up, watch some TV. Yeah, then there's nine in um, a lighter colour. And I will probably just do those as well. I've already shown you how they fit together. So you kind of get four small ones um, in one little section. Let's just come back. Oh, not that far. Um, yeah, you get like four little ones. So the same size as the ones I've just done there. You get four of them in there. Um, it's Yeah, they're really cute. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'll come back to you in a minute with... Um, some different coloured ones. Okay, bye.
Hello. So I'm about to do this eyelet in here. This is with a, an MPI and this is one strand and it's going to be going into every uh, it's going to be going into every single fabric hole. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 seven. Uh, oh yeah, with anyway. Um, so uh, one and a half, one and a half in. I'm just going to work my way around. It feels so weird. The the instructions say to pull taut, but it feels wrong <laughs> to do this, uh, especially after sort of stitching on linen or even weave or something, to then do this on purpose feels very, very wrong. This is what it says. This one is quite interesting because, so I don't, so I haven't been fixing any of these. I haven't been doing anything specific, but I don't, that one's leaving a big gap, but it's the way that the fabric is um, set. So I might just try and put that one next to it. That was better. I put it next to the kind of spike before I'll do. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, on half of it, you seem to be able to see the prongs of this thing much better than the other side. It seems to be a bit more weighted on one side than the other. Whether that's true or not, or a bit of the lighting, I don't know, but we are going with it. Halfway, yeah. Oh, typical on the last one. I took the tail out. There we go. Um, so I'll tie this one off and then come back for the last four, I think. Yeah, because I just realized that I missed these two. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I've filled in these two now. <laughs> so I've now got four left. Now I've got four left. Um, this is using Princess Pearl Petite uh, Gloriana thread. As you can see, it's very different to a normal um, DMC or any of these other threads that I've been using. And this one, as I mentioned in my previous video, is not every um, single fabric square, it's every cross stitch square, so it's over two holes. Um, so I'll just find the middle. Oops. 
I'm just gonna yeah just wanted to tighten that corner one really these I'm not actually pulling as much as I should maybe but because I've been consistent with them I've just left them but I do wonder if maybe I should should have made the holes bigger but I've done it now okay so let me travel underneath so let's just bring this one in so you can see there it's every other hole and I'll just get the other ones done with my hand on the back Should I go next? I'll go to this one next, I think. Oh, I have my breath then. <laughs> um, just to say, and I guess so that I can, if ever I watch this back, tomorrow is, did I just do that wrong? Hang on, I think I might have done that wrong. Yeah, I went through oops, the middle of a stitch. Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow is a work day and I've actually got a conference to go to for finance staff. For some of you, that's fascinating. Oh. Arms going off, um, and I'm actually going. So I'm going to be there with my the organisation I work for now, and I'm also going to be seeing everyone from my in the finance department of my old job, old job. So I haven't seen some of them for about two and a half months cancel she who must not be spoken out loud thought I said her name um, oh so that's really weird um, to see people okay so I'm gonna travel to this one now a nice tangle this is a really really tangly thread which I know I've spoken about before and I know also how much I am repeating myself in all of these videos 
that you are kindly watching <laughs> and even though I edit it when I record it I repeat myself so even sometimes the editing doesn't help because I'm sort of in the midst of things okay let's just do a quick count one two got 25 wait I'll do that again Twenty six. Wait, I'll do that again. Twenty six. Okay. <laughs> I do quite complex adding up for a job. Um, yes, twenty six. There. They look pretty. Um. Yeah. Oh, part of me really wants to bead them tonight, but it's. It's getting on a bit now, so I might do that. I think I'll do that tomorrow. I don't think there's any point pressuring myself. Um, I'll probably bring you along for the beading. I've got two... Ooh, is it two per part? Yeah, I've got two crystals to go in. One here and one here. Um, Yes, I was just thinking about the direction then, but it's fine. And yeah, there's a whole... Oh, I've already said this. I know I've repeated myself. I'm going to say it anyway. There's a whole row of beads that go all the way kind of through here. And you have to sort of constantly turn the fabric over, travel to here, do the bead, travel around here, do the bead, travel around here. So it's a bit of um, backwards and forwards sing with it. Um, only because... And I know I've said this before, I'm going to say it again anyway. I don't want the invisible thread to show in the holes here. Um, even though it's invisible, you wouldn't see it. So I'm going to bead tomorrow. Um, I, If you watched all of that, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'll bead tomorrow and then hopefully this part will be done. Um, thank you for watching this with me. I really, I really appreciate it if you have done. Um, Okay, see you in a minute for you, and I'll see you tomorrow for me. Bye. Hello. Uh, it's the next day, and I couldn't wait. I have been having a lovely chat with a stitchy friend and decided to bead during said chat, and therefore this is now done, and I have not recorded it for you. However, you have seen me beading lots of other things so I'm sure I'm sure you don't mind um so yes some lovely beads here at the bottom kind of like a light green color uh these two pretty chunky crystals and then there's these silver um beads that go all the way from one corner right through to the other um and there's the other crystal there so this is now done. I'm just going to come straight back out. Wee. Here we go. I did the other side as well. Um, that's all beaded too. So I'm about to start the next bit. And um, let me just check the check the mirror. Check my tablet. Yeah. So the next bit goes from. Uh, about here-ish, down here, around the corner, and stops about here. So it's not yet, I'm not yet on the full border that goes all the way around the whole piece. I've just got these four sections that just outline this triangular bit. Um, there is normal cross stitch, metallic cross stitch, rice stitches, back stitch, and beads so oh and I think there's something like 23 rice stitches per section and there's something like 24 stitches within each rice stitch 
So um, I looked at it and thought, oh, that's not very much. And then actually looked at it. It's quite a lot. So I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to start it now, tonight, now. Um, I don't need to move the scroll rods, the fabric up or anything. I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to start. See how I get on. Um, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who has watched so far. Um, I really appreciate it. Oh, I've got pen all over my hands. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for all your comments. Thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please do ask. I will reply. <laughs> I will reply to them. Um, I will reply. Uh, and if you wanted to support my channel at all, I do have a coffee, Kofi, K-O-F-I link, which I'll uh, link below or on the screen. I haven't decided. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. So part seven, here we come. Uh, see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.